Hey, it's Tuesday, March 19th. This is Zach Attack News Live. Thank you for everyone for joining live and watching afterwards. If you are, drop your comments down below and let me know how you guys are feeling today. We have a really, really good show, a lot of really great topics. Uh, we're going to be talking about how Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is now turning into a horror-connected universe. How did they get this done before Universal got the Dark Universe together? That's insane. We have some Marvel news coming in, some rumors and some fact. We have Aaron Taylor Johnson potentially being uh, the new James Bond. And much, much more. We're going to get through everything the way the show works out. I have different segments. And I'm going to go through each segment, break it down, and I'll go through the live chats to extend the conversation and talk to you guys in the community and uh, try to keep it towards what we're actually talking about and this particular subject. So I appreciate everyone. Let me know you, how you guys are feeling today. So we're going to get into the first uh, section. And that is going to be... Gonna be some rapid fire news, guys. We got some rapid fire news to start off, and the first one I'm gonna be talking about is something I just talked about in the beginning, and that's gonna be Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, creating a horror universe. This is coming from Variety. Make sure this is all zoomed in. Yes, it is. Do, 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 do. I was looking over it before. <laughs> this is by um, Alex Ritman. It's exclusive for them. It says welcome to Poo <laughs> welcome to the Poon. <laughs> I don't even know how to say this correctly without getting any lot of signs. Welcome to the Winnie the Pooh universe. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey team to unite Pooh, Bambi, Tinkerbell, and more in low-budget horror crossover. Six years after the Avengers Infinity War, another film is vying to become the most ambitious crossover event in history, this time in the lower-budget cinematic realm. The filmmakers behind Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, and the micro-budget slasher... What? Sorry, not Anne. The micro-budget slasher that sparked headlines for turning a... Mills? Oh, is that Zach Maline's uh, uh, cousin? Jovial Bear into a feral serial killer and made an incredible $5.2 million at the box office after costing under $50,000 to make. Now I see why they're making more of these movies. They only spent $50,000 on the first one and made $5.2 million. That's insane. They probably not even spending that much on the second one, and it looks like it has better production. I want to say it looks better. Um... They have unveiled that the Pooniverse Poo Monsters Assemble, bringing together Pooh and various other beloved child or children's characters gone bad. Where Avengers Infinity War had Iron Man, Spider-Man, Black Panther, Thanos, Pooniverse from prolific horror collaborators, Jagged Edge Productions, and ITN Studios will team Winnie the Pooh, this murders, the murderous version of figures including Bambi, Tinkerbell, Pinocchio, Peter Pan, Tigger, Piglet, the Mad Hatter, and Sleeping Beauty for an IP bludgeoning frenzy due for release in 2025. Indeed, on the poster, which Variety is also able to exclusively reveal, they're so happy to reveal this as an exclusive. <laughs> Who is seen swinging a bear trap on a chain while riding a vicious, bloodthirsty baby? Because why not? So, this is the poster. Let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can uh, kind of see the poster a little bit better. Uh, so, yeah. This is the poster for the new crossover film that we're going to be getting in 2025. It's interesting. I thought they were going to do separate films for each character leading into this because there was a rumor for about this a couple months back. And now they officially uh, announced it. It looks like there's some characters on here that they did announce. Honestly, the art is kind of cool. <laughs> but yeah, Murderous Bambi, Bambi here. And it looks like it has some supernatural aspects. I'm interested in how Sleeping Beauty is going to work. Is it going to be kind of like a siren's tale? There's so many different things they could do. And hopefully Winnie the Pooh Blood Honey 2 does better so they can put even more budget into it. Because <laughs> honestly, I, I like that we're getting something like this that's this ambitious, right? So we have the Avengers. We have the MCU. We haven't had any other universe that has been successful. Like they tried to do the Dark Monster universe. The Mummy came out. It was DOA on impact they had the whole like dark universe picture that didn't end up working and it was pretty it was doa on impact the dcu on uh, unfortunately failed and now we're going to be getting a dcu so hopefully that um is successful but unfortunately that failed so that doesn't count either um so i'm hoping for some interconnected universe and honestly horror movies should have done this a long time we had freddy versus jason we should have been had freddy versus jason versus michael versus this person versus that person it would have been really really fun so the fact that we're getting this and they have a lot of lore to twist because these are established characters that i guess is just free reign to use 
Uh, I find it interesting. I haven't watched the first Blood and Honey yet. I plan on watching it before Blood and Honey 2 comes out next month. Uh, but from what I saw in the trailer, it looked god awful. And from what everyone is saying, it is god awful. But I'm going to check it out. But the trailer for Blood and Honey 2 actually looks pretty fun. And if they can apply that fun and get the production values up each film, I think this could be something that could become like a cult classic so bad that you could laugh at it and pretty awesome. As horror, as horror fans, we should would love an Avengers that is all villains, um, explained actor-producer Scott Chambers, who leads Jagged Edge. It'd be like having Freddy, Jason, Halloween, Scream, all of those. Obviously, that will never happen, but we can make it happen in our own little way, and that's where the film has been born. Many of the characters set to appear in the Pooniverse will first feature in standalone films coming this year. Oh, okay. See, this is why I should have just read the article. Uh, among them are Bambi the Reckoning, Peter Pan Neverland Nightmare, The Pinocchio Unstrung, plus Winnie, plus Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey is getting a sequel, Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2, which is being released, say, March 26. I think that it's actually going to be, I guess it's March 26. I thought it was going to be in April, but it looks like it's going to be at the end of the month uh, around the time that um, Godzilla uh, at Kong New Empire comes out. The upcoming films will include various Easter eggs linking them towards the upcoming horrifying crossover. We got access to all these concepts, so it was like self-contained bubble, and we can do what we want with them. Um, this is the one who directed Blood and Honey and Blood and Honey 2, and will helm, helm the Pooniverse, so he, he's going to be directing the crossover movie. So he's the uh, Josh Whedon <laughs> of this. So yeah, it's really exciting. While the while the loose plot for Pooniverse will see the monsters team up to take on survivors from previous films, that's amazing. There won't be harmony within the ranks of the murderous ensemble, allowing for what Chambers describes as carnage within the group, epic sequences of monster versus monster. Casting is to include Chambers returning as Christopher Robin, Megan Placio as Wendy Darlin, Roxanne McKee as, Z uh, as Zana, Louis Santer as Tigger, with more announcements to come. Pooniverse Monster Assemble is a Jagged Edge production with ITN Studios and Premier Entertainment Handling Sales. Uh, Stuart Olsen and Nicole Holland will serve as executive producers from uh, ITN. What makes this exciting for me, uh, mostly, is that this is like an independent film doing this. The first one only was made for $50,000. That's not a lot of money for a film. And the fact that it blew up, it blew up like this, if you come up with interesting ideas that people want to see, and we're seeing more and more people want interesting ideas mixed with um safe ip if you have that balance they can live in harmony and this is something that's doing it and it's really really interesting is it the best thing since sliced bread uh, no 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 but i think that is a very interesting thing that can take on a life of its own obviously many people are not going to be into it but i think it's it looks cool i think it's a cool idea i'm down so let me know in the comments down below if you're watching this after or if you're watching this live. If you are interested in this, I'm just going to go through each of the, uh, the rapid fire news as quick as I can. And then I'll get to the live stream, live chats and talk to you guys there. So coming up next, this is coming from comicbook.com. Marvel Studio Exec confirms Nova Project is in development. Richard Ryder is on his way to the MCU. Uh, zoom out a little bit. Nova is a Marvel character who seems seems to be kicked around behind the scenes quite often around the years. A pre-James Gunn draft of Guardians of the Galaxy featured the character Avengers Infinity War considered opening with his arrival on Earth. According to a cruel joke once upon a time from the Rooster Brothers, he was in the final battle of Avengers Endgame. Since Marvel boss Kevin Feige promised the char character was classified as having immediate potential in a comicbook.com interview in 2018, the character has remained dormant. Now with X-Men 97 on the way, Marvel's head of streaming animation and television, Brandon Brad Winterbaum, has confirmed Nova is in development at Marvel Studios. We love Nova. We are in early development on Nova. Um, he had an exclusive interview with uh, Phase Zero Channel. Rumors have long swirled about the character, each taking new shape with their claims of which format Nova will debut, would take shape. Um, and Winterbaum is overseeing the titles, which go to Disney Plus, seem to be aiming for a series. We have a new system behind the scenes at Marvel Studios. We're more like a traditional studio now where we're developing more than we actually will produce. There are plans to develop Nova. I love Nova too. I love Richard Ryder too. I hope it gets to, to the screen. The world is always chaos. There's always things. you got to con conjure these things to make them happen. But I would love to see a Nova show one day. So it looks like he's pitching a Nova show, uh, which 
I'm kind of eh, on because I really think they need to introduce these characters in films first and then give them a show or a movie instead of giving them a show and then ha- hoping people see the show. And then when they sh- pop up in the movie, people aren't confused. So uh, I really, really hope that they introduce him in the movie first before he gets the show. Um, obviously, you know, it was created by Mark Wolfman, John, uh, John Buscema, and he first appeared in 1976. Richard Rider edition character is last surviving member of the Nova Corps, the Zendarian force, which spread the Nova powers until there was only one left. In 2011, Marvel introduced Sam Alexander version of Nova, created by Jeff Loeb and Ed Dennis with the parents animation. Ensemble event comics, Sam Alexander character has risen to popularity in recent years. Honestly, uh, once Sam gets uh, like in a game or an animated film or gets live action, he might rise to the popularity of Miles Morales because Miles... Uh, Kamala and uh, Nova or uh, Sam Alexander are the three characters that are like really big with the young Avengers champions teams. And I think they're all equal popularity in the comics, but obviously Miles has gone ahead in mainstream because of the the Spider-Verse films and the um, Miles video game. And obviously Kamala's on her way up. People really like Amon Valani. And obviously there's like Amadeus Cho. There's a lot of characters that they could do here. Obviously we know they're going to be doing Young Avengers soon. So these characters can get into the mix as well. However, the origin story for Richard Riot has all been completely laid out in the MCU, with Thanos having destroyed Xandar before the start of Avengers. There were Nova Corp people in uh, Infinity, no, not Infinity War, in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, so that makes sense to obtain the Power Stone. Whether or not this will be incorporated in the story remains to be seen. Are you excited for Nova and development of Marvel Studios? I am personally excited. I think Nova is a very great character. I really, really like um, uh, Sam Alexander. I think obviously Richard Ryder is the OG OG character, but I really, 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 really like uh, Sam Alexander a lot. So I w- hope that he's the type of character that people will gravitate towards to if they introduce them both at the same time, or I don't know what they could do with it. I, 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 I that they make sure that they don't just fumble the bag with this character because I think he's a character that is on a level like a Green Lantern that can do really, really well. Um, Let's move on. I'm going to have two more rapid fire news and then I'll I'll look into the live stream, see what you guys have to say about everything we're talking about. Uh, Next up, it's my, nope, that's not how I want to do it. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, yeah, this is coming ex- uh, exclusively from Variety. Popeye the Sailor Man live action film and development from Churman and King Features. Never heard of Churman or King Features before, but Popeye's is coasting to back to the big screen. The iconic Sailor Man and Spinach Chugger, who first appeared in comic strips in l- late 1920s, so he's technically a comic book character, will be a, the subject of new live action feature film from Churn Entertainment and King Features. The project is currently in development as a big budget feature and has attached screenwriter Michael Calio. So it has a screenwriter. So this is happening. Sexy Beast, The Family, and The Sopranos. Okay. Um, Sopranos is a TV show. I don't, I'm not sure about Sexy Beast and the Family. Those are not two projects that I've heard of, but obviously if he's worked on Sopranos, he has some writing chops because I heard that was a really well-written show. This is the first live action revisiting of the character since the 1980s film Popeye, led by Robert Williams, directed by Robert Altman and co-starring Shelley Duvall as a sailor quirky love interest in Olive Oil. The film was panned upon release, but has since gained a cult status and critical reconsideration. It's also It was also profitable, released by Paramount Pictures at $20 million budget and grossed roughly $60 million worldwide, which wasn't bad back in the day. Popeye celebrated his 95th anniversary this year after appearing in the 1929 comic Thimble Theater. Characters spawned both animated features, series, and heyday, and could be one of the earliest templates for mass merchandising across generations. Two years ago, Popeye was named a key inspiration for menswear collections. Okay, I don't need to know all that. Um, Some devout fans, which Popeye still has, crafted a series of self-made movie trailers this year, all fictional, which have racked up millions of views combined. These trailers imagine the character as a castaway warrior with Dwayne Johnson proportions. Dwayne Johnson would be appropriate. Uh, which may well be the direction this is headed creatively. Producers are in the process of attaching the studio partner. Okay, so these are the people that are putting the the um the backing behind it in terms of money, but they're looking for a studio partner that's for dis- distribution. So this is like a ways away, but it's very interesting. I think that I would have thought Papa would get an animated film. Um, you know, with Garfield coming back, we're getting a lot of of these old 
cartoons that kind of been dormant for a long time coming back. And I think Barbie has helped that. People feeling like you can bring these characters if you have an interesting twist. I think a, a live action Popeye who's a castaway uh, and and dealing with that. I think I think that combination of that and these fan trailers probably embolden these people to to do this. I just don't know how the lore for this because it's gonna be you know if you know Popeye he gets his powers from um what's the word I'm looking for he gets his powers from spinach. You know, so how is that going to work? You know, so we'll see how that ends up. But yeah, pop out of Sailor Man, live action. How do you guys feel about it? Let me know. So last rapid fire news, and this one's going to be real quick. Another uh, character, that uh, animated character coming back, being a revamped Warner Brothers animation sets Cat in the Hat. Well, Bill, Bill Hader, Quentin Brunson, Bowen Yang, and more. I'm spring 2026 release so far away. But it's only two years, honestly. It's not that far away. The new Warner Brothers animation under President Bill Domeski has booked the cast for the upcoming feature take of the Dr. Sue classic, The Cat in the Hat, which they're producing. Hide this. Uh, which they're producing with Dr. Seuss Enterprises. I didn't even know that. Um, there was a Dr. Seuss Enterprises with SNL alum Bill Hader playing the, t t t the title role. Joining him is Quentin Brunson, which I'm happy for. Good job, Quentin. Love her. That, and I love the fact that she's going to be getting roles that she doesn't have to create. Love that. And I love Bill Hader, too. He's awesome. He's so funny. So those two together is cool. Bowen Yang. Zoshi Gomez, finally. I've been wondering when she was going to be in something else. Obviously, you know, she's been in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness as um, America Chavez. And she's been on every red carpet. But I haven't seen her in any movies or TV shows since then. So it's really cool to see that she is doing something else. Um, Matt Berry from What We Do in the Shadows and Paula Pell from Girls 5 Ever. So it has a it's picking from a lot of different places, a lot of different fan bases, leaning very comedy heavy, which I like. Um, you know, so Sh Gomez showed that she has some comedy chops in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. She was very likable. Obviously, Bill Hader's hilarious. Quentin Brunson's hilarious. Uh, Matt, the What We Do in the Shadows is a hilarious show. So that's an interesting cast. A global theatrical release on March 6, 2026 has been set in this new feature version directed and written by Alessandro Caroni and Erica Ravenoja. Oof. The cat takes on his toughest assignment yet to chair a pair of siblings struggling with their move to a new town. Pick is produced by Dan. Da, 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 da. I don't care about who's the producers. We're overjoyed to partner with our friends at Dr. Seuss uh, to take audiences of all ages to, on an adventure into the beloved world of the cat in the hat. With this incredible voice cast led by Bill Hader as the fun loving agent of chaos himself and our filmmakers, Alessandro and Erica at the helm. We look forward to sharing this Seussism cinematic spectacle with audiences everywhere in 2026. Uh, we're excited to see such an exceptional group of talent join the effort to bring this iconic property to the screen as an animated feature. It's been an amazing experience collaborating with the team at Warner Brothers. Yada, yada, yada. Um, Cat in the Hat has a lot of potential, uh, for especially as a kid's movie, as a, a family movie. I think that's really, really exciting. I really like this cast. I'm not too sure about the, the creators behind it in terms of like the, the director-writers group. Honestly, hold up. We're in a second. This is why we have the Googles. Uh, let me Google who these people are. Um, if I can find... Here we go. These names. Who is this? What has this person worked on? That is the main question. So I can have a vote of confidence in terms of direction and writing. So Alexander Caroni has worked on Kung Fu Panda 3. Okay. So he has some big budget animation stuff behind him. Um, the other stuff he's worked on is something called tr Trash. Okay. Panda Paws and Me and My Shadow, which seems to be foreign stuff. I think like his only uh, uh, American thing was Kung Fu Panda 3, which is cool. Okay. Uh, Kung Fu Panda 3 is not bad at all. And then the other person that he's collaborating with, which is interesting, it's not going to just be by himself, so they're going to be working on this, is Erica Ravanoja. She's worked on Clone High. Okay, I've heard good things about that. She's worked on the Trolls movies. She's worked on Cloudy and Meatballs 2, uh, Girls Trip, and Borat, the Borat sequel. So she has a wide range of experience working on many different projects, some animated, some live action, and mostly comedy, uh, which <clears throat> I think is very, very important. So I, I feel a little bit more secure 
that uh, these two are helming it since they have experience with uh, silly characters and things like that. I think that this could be really, really dope. Um, so that is going to be the end of Rapid Fire News. Let me see what the live chat has to say. Um, and uh, actually, before I do that, let me end the poll and see what you guys had to say. So I dropped the poll. I said, Puniverse, yes or no? That's all I said. 66% <laughs> of the people said no. 33% said yes. So most people in my live chat is not down for the Puniverse. <laughs> but uh, some people are. And I, 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 I'm down. I'm down for some silliness. Not everything has to be serious. Not everything has to be well made to be, you know, let's have a little fun. Uh, let's see. Hey, beloved channel member, have you seen me? T, how are you doing? He said the dark universe failed so that the poon Poonati. <laughs> oh no, why did I say that out loud? Pooniverse could run. <laughs> this is gonna be so bad. It's the horror Avengers, yeah. Or the a Legion of Doom horror version. <laughs> LMAO murderous Bambi. I love your optimism on this, but it will be terrible. <laughs> but so bad, that is good. I just got here. What is this? <laughs> Blood and Honey is awful. It's just a fun to watch. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be guilty pleasure, a guilty pleasure universe. See you, Blood and Honey 2, next Wednesday. I expect to be bad. <laughs> Who exactly is we? I have never asked for the Avengers level team of villains. <laughs> Oh, man. I think that's very wrong for them to take classic Disney characters and make them into horror movies or horror universe. Okay. That's not your forte. That's fair. I think it's interesting to have a little interesting take on it. I'm not, I don't hold Disney or any property so special. Like Brightburn was like a dark version of Superman. That's fine. Zach, it comes out next week for three days only. Oh, okay. And then it comes out the 26th uh, wide. Okay. If they can get Morbius to show up in the culminating movie, then I'll be all in the universe. <laughs> Sony might ask. You know what I mean? He said, yeah, it's just a gimmick. I can't see myself going to see any Winnie the Pooh movie in theaters. Uh, I'm going to be watching the second one in theaters. I know that for sure. <laughs> I saw the first one the wrong way and got chewed out in my comments section. So this time I'm seeing it in theaters. Oh, boy. Hey, Dark Movies, thank you for joining the live stream. Noted. I don't think I'll see any of the Pooh movies. I don't know who Nova is. Okay, that's fair. So you got some uh, some looking up to do. Nova is a cool character. Nova has a cool comic suit, but never really, never really read the comics. The article you're reading is not what... Oh, I had a feeling that was happening. I apologize about that, guys. I've, never, I've heard of Sexy Beast. Never watched it, though. Can't stay for too long. Got to head to bed. Yeah, I know it's like 1 a.m. where you are. Have a good night. I remember Popeye movie. I've seen it several times. It was a good movie. Ooh, great suggestion. Have you seen with T? John Cena as Popeye is the way. Yes. He would be perfect. First of all, his casting will automatically get people interested in it. And I think he can sell the, 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 the silliness of this film. I hope the cat in the hat is better than the last one. The, uh, the other one wasn't bad, but it was forgettable for me. Yeah, I, I feel like they put in a, cons a cons uh, considerable, that's the word I'm looking for, considerable amount of effort into this. Hey, Cal Aldelli, what's up? Welcome to the live stream, man. I feel like they need the sloth from Slaughterhouse for the poo thing. Slaughterhouse was great. <laughs> that would be great. Just bring in all the low-budget horror movie icons. <laughs> Seeing poo movies sound crazy. <laughs> I can go for John Cena's Popeye. Yeah, I'm down for John Cena's Popeye. Um, that is hilarious. Uh, let's see. So we're going to move into the next topic. And this is going to be talking about Civil War's early reactions. This is coming from Dark Horizons. Uh, I use this site usually to get the news articles all together, and then I go to the, the site sources. But uh, they compiled like some of the early reactions for Civil War. So A24 is having a, a film come out called Civil War. Obviously, it's not uh, anything to do with Marvel. And yeah, a lot of people are curious about this after the initial trailer um, came out and uh, showed a United States divided. It says Ex Machina, which is a great film I heard people say, but I haven't seen it. But Annihilation is a film that I love. And Alex Garland also made a show called Devs that I really like. 
and he made men, which I actually like too. So Alcon has a really solid resume, usually just sci-fi though. So this is going to be his first like political thriller. Took to South by Southwest last night with the world premiere of his highly anticipated new film, Civil War. The story takes place in the United States in a not so distant future when 19 states have seceded from the Union and now is made of factions. The action follows a war zone photographer and others making their way across country gone mad. In a QA after the screening, Garland says this isn't a pointed commentary on the 2024 U.S. presidential election, as he wrote this four years ago. Indeed, reviews for the film indicate the alliances here are rather deliberately not straight red and blue state situation and are between states you may not consider natural allies like California and Texas. Garland indicates the aim is to universalize the conflict on screen, how the internal concept of American exceptionalism that makes people feel they are immune to the problems of other countries is a falsehood. One of the things history shows is that nobody's immune, nobody's exceptional, and if we don't apply rationality and decency and thoughtfulness to these problems in any place, it can get out of control. This quote basically being like the underbelly of the film makes me really, really excited for this. I really like that he has a point to what he's doing. So it has 25 reviews. As of when they posted this, it's 25 reviews, 88% on Rotten Tomato, but it looks like when I looked it up now, I think it's at 39 reviews, and that was at 90 or 92%. So it rose up the more people saw it, which is a good sign. Um, see some of the reviews. This is from AV Club. Matthew Jackson said, It's a film about open-ended question of how humanity we, we as a species have left in us. And that makes it a provocative, thrilling monster of a movie that will sear itself into your eyeballs. Wow. Uh, this is from Peter... Uh, DeBrudge from Variety. It's the most upsetting dystopian vision yet from the sci-fi brain who killed off all of London for the zombie uprising depicted in 28 Days Later. I forgot he did do 28 Days Later. And one that can't be easily consumed as entertainment. Ooh, so it's going to be a little bit of a hard pill to swallow. This is coming from Polygon, Tasha Robinson. And most likely that's a black girl. So ooh, ooh. Uh, the movie is about a, as apolitical as a story and set during a modern American civil war can be. It's a character piece with a lot more to say about the state of modern journalism and the people behind it than about the state of the nation. Okay, that's an interesting take. This is from Lovia. Can't say that last name from The Hollywood Reporter. Garland wrote the film in 2020 as he watched Cogs on American self mythologizing exceptionalist machine turn. I don't know what any of that stuff means, but okay. Propelling the nation into a nightmare. With this latest film, he sounds the alarm, wondering less about how a country walks blindly into its own destruction and more about what happens when it does. Which is interesting. We have a lot of movies about wondering um, about the country walks blindly and stuff. We have movies like that. So seeing what happens after it does, we haven't had a disaster film like that in a while. This is coming from David Sims at the Atlantic. Though Civil War is told with a blockbuster conf, it often feels frustratingly apolitical as much smaller movie. Even so, I left the theater quite exhilarated. Interesting. Um, he said, though Civil War is told with a blockbuster kind of feel, it feels frustratingly... If I knew what this word was, <laughs> then, I could, then I could be like, oh, I know what he means. On to Google. Why can't people just... Uh, whoa. This is... It, when I type that word in, it just shows like a, a, a thing. Let me see. Following epilepsis, especially as to difficult to... Un oh, okay. So he's saying it's difficult to understand like a smaller indie film. Okay. Uh, from Katie Rife from the IndieWire. It's a, run to, it's a return to form for director after the misstep of men. I don't agree with that. Men was not a misstep. A film that's grim and harrowing by design. The question is, is the emptiness that sets in once the shot has worn off intentional as well? Interesting. He's saying that it feels a little empty. There were some other reactions that I've read. Talk about how Kirsten Dunst was, ama was amazing in this film. Kaylee Spain, he's really, really good. And her, her relationship with Kirsten Dunst is really great. Nick Offerman is great as like the president. Um, that's trying to bring things back together. Jesse Plemons is fantastic, but it's Jesse Plemons, so that's what you could expect. But I'm really excited for this film. I'm an A24 fanboy. I love their films, and I think that um, this could be really, really special. Blood, uh, Love Lies Bleeding, which came out recently, was dope. So I'm hopefully the track record for A24 continues to rise here. What do you guys think about the early reactions for Civil War? Is it something that you're excited about? Have you seen the trailer? Um, is this something that you're going to check out in theaters or you want to see re more reviews come in uh, before you go check it out? I'm going to check out what the live stream has to say.
Hey, Derpy. He said John Cena needs to be skinny, no muscles. Then I think he can he could get down and wait, or they could CGI it. He said, Really, Cena, really knowing them, they'll cast Cindy Sweeney as olive oil and Kevin Hart as spinach. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I think Cindy Sweeney is too young versus John Cena if they were to cast John Cena. I'm so excited for Civil War, also very prepared for the real thing. <laughs> okay. Um, I heard really good things about Civil War. It's got see ninety. Is that a ninety-four Rotten Tomatoes now? Ex Machina is brilliant. I, I have to watch it. It sounds like something I would love. Annihilation with Portman. That shit was horrible. They couldn't capture the story from the book. So I didn't read the book, so I I have not. I don't have no basis. It was amazing to me. So I, I don't really care about the, if it adapted it properly. I I'm kind of over that. As long as the movie's good, I'm starting to change my mind on Civil War. Starting to look forward to it. Okay. I'm definitely going to see Civil War. I like Beef Toberman. Nick Offerman? Beef Toberman. I don't know what that means. Uh, well, if the carrot wins, then this film probably won't be too far off. <laughs> the carrot. Epileptical, difficult to understand. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate that. Men was terrible on almost every level except this. it looked amazing. I don't agree. I think it's a fantastic film. I'm definitely seeing Civil War in theaters. Nice. Okay. So we got some support in the chat. Let's move on to the next Topic, and that is gonna be so this topic breaking gossip is talking about some films news that is not super confirmed, um, but maybe close to being confirmed. And we have two top uh two things to talk about today that I'm excited about. The first one coming from the Hollywood Reporter. This is exclusive by them, so this might be true, but the only reason I'm putting this as a um, a rumor still as gossip is because it hasn't been confirmed by James Gunn, and he usually confirms these things. And I haven't seen him confirm it yet. If he has, update me in the live stream and let me know. But Hollywood Reporter says Teen Titans live action movie is a go at DC Studios and it's be written by who's writing Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Um... It's, it's a go, it's go time for Teen Titans. Ah, I see what you did there. The DC heroes, which began as a teenage sidekick of their more famous and kind of counterparts, again, their own live action feature from James Gunn and Peter Safran led DC Studios. The comic movie division Warner Brothers Discovery has tapped Anna, I don't know how to say her last name, to pen the screenplay for the project. They must really like Supergirl Woman Tomorrow if they already got her doing the next thing. And I wonder how young Supergirl is going to be. Because if they have her penning this and then penning Titans, I wonder if Supergirl is going to be young enough to be in the Titan team. Um, but we'll see. The hiring further in court constitutes the actress and playwright turned scribe is a DC family as she's already writing Supergirl Woman tomorrow. The T Titans were first introduced in the mid 1960s and featured Robin, Kid Flash, Aqualad, as well as Wonder Girl. Other teams such as Speedy, the sidekick to Green Arrow, joined the adventures later. The comics skewed young and were not considered major sellers until the 1980s relaunch with Marv Wolfman, legendary, and George Perez, legendary. That George Perez uh, um, art is legendary. With the addition of Beast Boy and new creation Cyborg, Raven, and Starfire joining Robin and Wonder Girl, the new Teen Titans became a massive hit and the DC number one selling comic. The run matured the characters, defined personalities, relationships, introduced true arch enemies with many themes and ideas that still reverberate in the comics and other storytelling forms in modern times. The book has been revamped several times in various configurations. And obviously, um, you know, they have a Titans. Uh, one where they're adults. Ooh, I hate when that happens. Uh, make sure you guys can actually see. Okay, because I, I fumbled the bag on the last one. Uh, yeah, uh, they have the, the, where they're no longer teenagers; they're more adults. With Titans, uh, Teen Titans became an unexpected hit franchise thanks to Teen Titans Go. How dare you? <laughs> Who wrote this? Boris Kit. It's not Teen Titans Go why that sh why the, it became an unexpected hit. Teen Titans from Cartoon Network is why it's hit. Obviously, Teen Titans Go continued it, but it's not Teen Titans Go. A comedic frequently meta take on DC. The animated series has a run. Yada, 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 yada. DC movie. Um, Norga no, Nogira. I think that's how you say it. Probably not. It sounds like it's a Spanish last name. Uh, she wrote on Vampire Diary Diaries. She wrote, wrote on the uh, Michael J. Fox show. High Town. Um, she wrote a play, so she has some experience writing, but nothing with big budget films. 
But obviously, I think like some James Gunn is probably there shepherding it. Just like a lot of things that happen in Marvel, he's taking a lot of the Marvel um, playbook and bringing people who don't have big budget experience, but like mentoring them. I think that's what's going to be happening here. But I think it's exciting to get Titans at least planned. I do think that it's weird that um, we're getting uh, a T, T Titans like development so fast. We don't have the 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 Justice League Seven set. We haven't seen even Superman Legacy yet. We haven't seen so much of these characters in this new DC universe. So for them to already be planning it, I guess that they could develop it and then hold on to it until they're ready to do it. But um, I'm excited for Teen Titans. I think that is really ripe for uh, storytelling. It's interesting that we're going to be getting uh young uh the young avengers or whatever they decide to call the young avengers in the mcu and they're also going to be getting teen titans maybe around the same time so they may be competing with each other um and that this headline might be trying to get ahead of marvel like hey look we announced that teen titans is coming out before you guys confirmed that you were doing young avengers now it seem like you guys are copying so um that'll be really really interesting i think that this movie could be great depending on how, the tone of this new dc universe let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel let me see what you guys saying in the live chat I know a lot of people from Parks and Rec do voiceovers. Oh, okay. The awkward moment when the studio had loves a writer because of a project and production, and then when that film comes out, it bombs, then they're stuck with two duds. <laughs> I hope that's not the case in this situation. I'm really rooting for DC to have like consistent hits and to be consistently great and not be something that uh is just trash. Um, but yeah. It is weird that they're just giving um, her two, like, really, really um, pivotal groups of characters, like Supergirl and then also Teen Titans, uh, before we see how it, it pulls out. We don't even know who's directing and stuff like that. So that's going to be really, really interesting. Uh, let me see. I'm going to put a poll in the chat. Teen Titans, are you excited? Yes. Or no. Have to see trailer. Boom. Oh, um, I love T Titans Go. Uh I, I I was pissed that they canceled the original T Titans, so I didn't really get into T Titans Go, but the stuff that I've seen is really funny. Never seen T Titans. You need to go watch T Titans, man. Didn't they have a live action Teen Titans already? No. So they had a live action Titans where they're more closer to adults. It was dark. It was gritty. Um, that, so that was on Max. It's not a, a it wasn't a movie. They're gonna be doing a movie set in the DCEU. Cause remember the Batman movie that's gonna be set in the DCU, the Batman Brave and the Bold, is gonna have the Bat family around. So Nightwing is gonna exist, Tim Drake is gonna exist. So we're gonna have sidekicks in this universe, which is exciting. Did I see the mock-up live-action Teen Titans cast? No, I didn't. I've never seen Teen Titans until I started watching Go. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. Teen Titans Go is what makes it popular because the OG Teen Titans animated series is what made me really get into it. I love that show. So good. And then Young Justice obviously was great as well. Uh, but moving on to the next topic in the uh, gossip section of this. Um, this is coming from The Sun. Uh, this has kind of been rumored for a long time um, that Aaron Taylor Johnson, who, you know, he's played <laughs> License to Kick Ass. Uh, he played, uh, obviously, Quicksilver in Avengers Age Ultron, got killed off in that film. He was in Kick Ass 1 and 2 as Kick Ass is the, the Tilly character. He's been around. He was in um, Bullet Train. Um, last year where I feel like that's probably where they were like, he could be James Bond because I could see him playing that version of the character that he did in that movie, but less psychotic. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, like I said, it was first revealed in 2022 that he emerged as a front runner to play um, the new James Bond. Um, Brit actor Aaron Taylor Johnson is taking his martinis shaken, not stirred, after being formally offered a job as the new James Bond. Insider said that the kick-ass movie star expected to accept his role as 007, taking over from Daniel Craig, who played the MI6 most famous spy for 15 years. Here's what Aaron Taylor Johnson could look like. I Obviously, I don't think that's... I think they're going to make him cut his hair or something like that. I don't think his hair is going to look like that. 
<laughs> um, obviously, like I said, he's a, he was kick ass. He was Quicksilver. Um, he said Eon, Produ Eon, Eon Productions, which makes the Spy Thriller films, is on course to start shooting this year. As source said, Bond is Aaron's job. Should he wish to accept it, the formal offer is on the table. They are writing to hear it. As far as Eon is concerned, Aaron's going to sign his contract in the coming days, and they can start preparing for the big announcement. So this is really, really interesting. It's not too much information. This is still... Uh, yeah, like, like you said, that, that is a terrible pick. Uh, but Aaron Taylor Johnson is really great casting. I think a lot of people felt like it might not be great casting and was not too sure about the character. But I think that he's a great actor. He has the fall guy with Ryan Gosling coming up um, soon. So he's going to have that. Obviously, he's going to have Craven coming out this year. A uh, Fall Guy does well. Who knows? We might get a sequel to that. Uh, if Craven actually is a decent movie on the level of like a Venom film, we may get a Craven franchise. So he might be on the cusp on moving up in terms of big pictures and getting into stuff. If Craven hits, this is going to be a great decision for them. If Craven does not hit, um, then oof, it's going to be it's going to look really weird. But I think he can be a great, um, a great, great James Bond. I think that he has the chops. I think he has the emotional range. I think he has, I think he has, because I think with James Bond, you have to have a level of British attractiveness. And I specifically want to say British attractiveness um, that you need to make that work. And I think he has it. So uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm excited for it. Let me know in the comments down below if you're excited to see if Aaron T. Johnson actually is going to be James Bond. I feel like when they make these rumor posts that it's closer than we think, but who knows? Because obviously this is a, just a rumor right now. It's not really, really official source, but it's been floating around for like the last two years. Let's see what the live chat has to say. Uh... I think it would be fantastic casting. Nice. Like you said, that was a terrible pick. He was great in Tenet. Ah, I don't really remember him. I know he was in Tenet, but he didn't really do much in Tenet. He dies in Fall Guy. That's true, but we don't know how long he's in the movie before he dies. And we know that could be a red herring. Maybe he's not really dead. Craven will not hit. You don't know that, have you seen with T? It's possible. <laughs> Look, people thought Venom wasn't going to hit, and it did. I know Morbius and Madam Web didn't. But it's possible that Craven will. I'm definitely interested in seeing Aaron Taylor Johnson as Bond. I think he could be a good after seeing him in Bullet Train. Yep, he did. He did die. Yeah, he dies a lot. <laughs> he does die a lot. He died in Bullet Train. He died in Avengers. He, he didn't die in Kick Ass, thankfully. He said, "Yes, I do." You don't know. <laughs> he was in Tenant. Yeah, he was in Tenant. He was one of the um, the soldiers helping um, with the, the 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 final mission. Venom was a bad movie. That's yeah, but it was a successful one. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people love that film. So I can't. I'm I'm just going based off the popularity and saying like it could hit for people. You think it's a bad film, but majority obviously doesn't because it got a sequel. I, th I definitely think Craven will do pretty good. We'll see. We'll see. You know, a lot of people are talking about Craven from the video game. So that's going to be really, really interesting. I like him. I think he's cool. Yeah. So let's move on to the next topic. This is going to be. So buy, rent, or sell. This is where I react to the new trailers that have come out recently. And we talk about we buy it meaning that we're going to go check it out either on streaming or in theaters. We're going to sell it. We're going to wait to either if it's a theatrical film, you're going to wait for it to go, to rent or refer reviews. If it's a streaming film, wait for reviews. Or are you going to, um, sorry, sorry, I mixed that up. I mixed up my own thing. Buy it, mean you're going to go check it out immediately, whether it's streaming or in theaters. Rent it, meaning it's like you're literally going to rent it instead of going to theaters or you'll stream it later or wait for reviews. And then sell it, meaning like you're going to take a pass. You're not going to watch this at all. You're not interested in these uh, this this thing. So let's do this. Ooh, here we go. I feel like that's not the one I usually use. No, that's too small. I guess this is it. Here we go. So the first trailer I'm going to react to today is the second trailer for Mad Max uh saga furiosa uh i thought the the first trailer was okay it felt like it was just a bunch of choppy bits of the movie that's not finished yet so hopefully this one is a lot smoother 
Obviously, this is a spinoff from the Mad Max series, which I haven't seen yet, and I need to watch because a lot of people talk about how great Mad Max Fury Road is. So I'm excited. So I might I'm gonna try to do that before this movie comes out. It comes out May 24th, so it comes out um on my birthday weekend. So this might be my birthday present to myself. So this is gonna be my reaction to the official trailer number two for Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Let me know if you buy, rent, or sell. Furiosa! We've come too far. Furiosa! We've come too far. <laughs> I like the way this looks already. It looks more story focused and not just random clips. George Miller. As a child, my world was forever changed. My I'm the Taylor Joy in action movies. Wait, is that Chloe Grace Moretz? No. I thought that and looked he like took a it all from me. I love how he has like a four white suit. Have he? She's from a place of abundance. This is our destiny. Yeah, this looks better than the first my trailer. Childhood. My mother. I want oh, them back. Okay. I want them back. Mm. Hey. Whatever you have to do. However long it takes. Whoa! Thomas will find your way home. Protect the green place. It's time to take what rightfully out! Ray! Sadie! Guys! <laughs> Perfect for, uh, this time where it's trying to be a silly. Where are you going? What is this? Oh, there is no heart! If you find him, he's mine. Oh. There will always be war, but to get home. Okay. Furiosa fought the world. I'm down. That is so much better than the initial trailer. And I hope that they uh, put that one in theaters moving forward because this is a much better trailer. You get a, a feel of the story. The VFX look better. You get a feel of what is going on. Like, I don't know anything about Mad Max. And I can I am interested in this, you know? Like, this probably, if I go watch the Mad Max films, I would enjoy this even more because it's probably Easter eggs and stuff like that that I'd, um that I'm not catching on, but this looks really, really good. I'm, I'm a fan of Annie Taylor Joy, so I'm excited to see her in an action franchise. I love Chris Hemworth in almost everything he's in. He's just a great actor, um, not just in Thor. I'm interested in this a lot. I'm buying. I'm down. I'm going to go check this out in theaters. Coming out my birthday weekend, so I'm excited to check this out. Let me know in the comments down below if you are excited to check out uh, Furiosa, A Mad Mad Saga, uh, and let me see what the live chat has to say about this film. Craven, Craven could be a sleeper hit. Yeah, it could. I have seen him in test footage or something as Bond, but hey, hey, I thought Pierce wasn't going to be good, going to be any good. This is why you always gotta like just give people a chance when you see casting and not base it off what you saw them before. This happens all the time. Heath Ledger is the biggest example. People thought he was gonna be a good Joker, and now he's one of the he's the most popular live action Joker. So you got you just gotta give it a chance. And I love Pierce Bronson. That's my bond, Pierce, Bron Pierce Bronson. So, no, not that movie. Well, I'm not sure what you mean. This is a much better trailer. I agree. It's a much, much better than um, the 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 first initial one that they showed, where it felt very choppy and the VFX didn't feel great. Cell, not interested at all. Oh wow. Okay. Visually, Mad Max was amazing. I wasn't sold on the story too much. It was just one long music video to me. Okay. I've actually heard that critique before. So it's interesting to see if that continues. I love the 
original trilogy. I wasn't a fan of the one with Tom. Tom? Tom who? I don't know anything of this of this franchise, so you can't just say names like that and expect me to know. Buy because I need to see this in IMAX. Okay, so we got to sell. We got somebody that doesn't want to watch it. We got somebody that's definitely going to check it out. I'm definitely going to check it out. But yes, the trailer looks way better than the original. I didn't even want to watch this based off the first trailer. Agreed. Oh, Tom Hardy. You talking about Fury Road? Oh, wow. I, I only heard great things about Fury Road. So you're the first person to say that you didn't uh, didn't like it. Uh, so I'm excited to check this out. Let's look into the next trailer. So the next one is, I don't usually react to like TV show trailers, but I think this is very fitting. This is going to be Star Wars The Acolyte. Um, obviously, let's see, Disney has prepared a teaser trailer for Star Wars series The Acolyte with uh, further posters added and stuff like that. Set around 50 years before the events of Episode One and towards the end of the High Republic era, the live action series follows a former Jedi Padawan and her one time master. An investigation into a shocking crime spree pits a respected Jedi master against a dangerous warrior from his past. As more clues emerge, they travel down a dark path where sinister forces reveal all is not what it seems. It's going to be starring Jonas Sutamo, Jody Turner Smith, Manny Chasino, Carrie Ann Moss, Dean Charles Chapman, Margarita Lavia, Charlie Barnett, Rebecca Henderson also stars. The series hails from creator Leslie Headland and will premiere eight episodes exclusively on Disney Plus. Premieres eight episode. Okay, the show precedes Star Wars Skeleton Crew, which is set to to be in the Mandoverse time period in the back half of 2024. They'll be following the second release of Andor in early 2025. A new season of Ahsoka also in the works as well. And obviously we know the Mandalorian Grogu movies coming out in 2026. So let's see what they got for us with this new Star Wars series. Let me zoom in. So it's going to be my reaction to the act. Close your eyes. Your eyes it feels like the prequel can deceive you in terms of look we must not trust them okay i like the feel i like this it feels a little different tell me what comes into your mind from the other shows that you got life balance i see fire Carry him out. Oh. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. Oh, I saw people talking about the. What happened? I said. Oh, that's a guy this. from uh, Squid Game. Yeah, he's in. There. This is about power. Ooh. And who I really like the design so far, everybody. What is that? <laughs> okay, that got me excited. Oh, you're not gonna show who it is? Not a bad teaser. Shows that this has a lot of uh heavy lifting and work to do. Um, I think that it looks okay. I think that this is a, it's definitely a teaser, not something that makes me super duper excited. I thought it was gonna look a little grittier based on that poster that they showed, but it feels like the other Star Wars shows. Um, I like the, the part that I like the most in the trailer is the designs of the characters. I like that assassin, a man, I think that's Amanda Stellenberg. Um, the way the hair is and her suit, she looks really cool. We haven't really seen ninja assassins in live action in Star Wars. At least I haven't, at least. Um, I'm excited for to see the rise of the dark side. Like, if it's a murder mystery film with Jedi versus um, Sith, the rise of the Sith, and they're called Acolytes, that sounds really, really interesting. I like the cast um, so far that's in there. The guy from Squid Game, I don't remember his name. 
uh, obviously Carrie Ann Moss, and one of the other guy who has the Killmonger haircut. I kept seeing people say, "My own God, not the Killmonger haircut," but that has been a meme and a joke for a couple uh, months now. How like ever since Black Panther, um, every black character has that Killmonger haircut now. <laughs> they can't do anything else, so it's funny to see another character with it. But I like that actor. Um, he was really, really great in How to Get Away with Murder. I haven't really seen him since, so I'm excited for him. Um, this looks pretty cool in terms of like how it looks, uh, but I feel like the trailer felt it was missing something, you know, and then it felt like it was getting there towards the end, and then they cut it off. So it looks decent. Uh, I want to say I'm like super excited. I won't say I'm buying it. I'm not buying it yet. I'll say that I am. Uh, I'm gonna rent. I'm renting it. I'm renting it. I, I'll I'll see how the reviews are. I'll see how things are. I don't review TV shows on this channel because there's too much to review TV shows and do news coverage and movies. But um, I'll definitely check it out if the Star Wars heads say it's good. Drop in your comments down below and let me know what you guys feel about the Acolyte teaser trailer. Are you buying it? Are you selling it? Are you renting it? Are you uh, excited for this at all? This is going to be the first live action High Republic era stuff that we've ever gotten. Let me know how you feel about that. Let's see what the live chat has to say. Original three, the original three with Mel Gibson were great. Okay, Beyond the Thunder holds a special place in my heart. Okay, Beyond the Thunder, Rick and Morty did an episode based off it. Forgive me, but nothing about Star Wars excites me anymore. That's fine. I get it. Acolyte looks decent, like Star Wars best property in a while. Okay, I don't think it looks better than the Mandalorian, but I hear you. Oh, is that Trinity? I thought that was her. Yep, yep. From uh, Matrix, which I haven't seen yet. <laughs> Star Wars and his fans have a terrible track record for their treatment of black characters, especially black women. Not a fan I'll sell. I, that is something that I wasn't thinking about. But yeah, there's multiple black characters in here. I already see people in comments on the Instagram video saying it's woke and, you know, oh God, women and yada, yada, yada. So the, the bad treatment looks like it's going to continue. I'm definitely looking forward to Acolyte. I've been waiting for a show about the dark side. Yeah, I think that's what keeps my interest. The fact that this is about the dark side is really, really interesting. Um, and seeing their rise uh, through the ranks and how they took power is really, really interesting. It's only eight episodes, so it feels like it's going to be like really focused on a particular story. But uh, I, I, I think that's just a really great idea to do. The one thing that Star Wars has that's kind of lost, it doesn't have any source material to pull from anymore because they don't pay attention to those uh, extended books. But um, just do the ideas and hopefully it's well written. Get, get good writers in there. Okay. Before I get to the last, did I drop a poll? Oh, I didn't have a poll again in here. I thought I had a lot. Of oh, yeah, I do have a poll. Let me end this poll real quick. This poll was asking... Uh, T Titans go T Titans live action. Are you excited or not? Uh, sixty percent of you guys said yes. Uh, twenty percent said no. Twenty percent said you have to see a trailer. That's totally fine. Uh, so I'll drop a new poll. Are you? Let me see. Favorite trailer. So that's uh, for Yosa, Acolyte. And then, obviously, the one we're about to watch right now. Start that poll. Let's get into the next video. So that's going to be the first trailer uh, for The Crow. I haven't got to react to this yet. I uh, decided I wanted to check it out. Obviously, this is going to be a remake of the old-school grunge co uh, comic book adaptation um, starring Bill Skarsgård. And FK Twigs is going to be playing his love interest. I'm excited to see what they, they got for us. What's the first thing you liked about me? I thought that you were quite brilliant and broken. You feel like my person? <laughs> you feel like my person. What's the worst thing you've ever done? I saw things. I shouldn't have seen any of them. That is horrifying to sit there and watch someone die and die like that. Oh. 
when someone dies. A crow carries the soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes something so bad happens that the soul cannot rest. Until you put the wrong the things right. Power of a god. Okay, this is a red bad trailer because goddamn, they just held the, the shotgun. But you're running out of time to save her. With a hole in his chest. Woo! How is it red bad? Every single one of them. Yeah. I killed you. Yeah. You did. We have a problem. He came for us. First impulse. Anger. It's not anger. It's love. What you become. You know that love promises only pain. You have no idea what hell awaits you. No, I do. Oh, yeah, that's true. You've been there already. How many people have you loved? I'll never be alone. for music for this um yeah i think that the trailer looks good uh doesn't look bad i think it does feel like a lot of revenge movie stories the difference here is that the fact that he's kind of like immortal which i guess kind of could make the kills interesting i'm just scared that if we know he can't die there's no stakes in terms of what's happening in the action unless you just invest. If they make us so invested in that relationship in the beginning and then he dies, um, then it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, later in the film where he's killing everyone. It's like, oh, I want everybody to get the comeuppance and if there's some really cool action scenes. So I think this looks okay. I'm a fan of the original Crow. I used to watch that movie a bunch when I was younger when I probably shouldn't have. Uh, I like Bill Skarsgård. I think he's a talented actor. I just feel like the look of this character is not, they didn't nail it. This looks like the Joker from the, from the Suicide Squad, kind of. And I think you don't want comparisons to that because universally, not universally, but pretty much universally, people don't like the look of that character. So um, yeah, I am. this is another one that I'm going to be renting. I uh, got to see reviews. I got to see how it is. I might end up watching it anyway because I'm movie reviewing. It's probably going to be the biggest movie coming out that weekend. But uh, I'm not super hyped for it. Maybe a second trailer will get me more hyped for it. But it is bloody and violent. So let me know in the comments down below if you buy, renting, or selling this trailer. If you're excited for it. If you're like not going to check it out at all. If you disgusted it as a Crow fan, let me know. And let me see what the live chat has to say. You haven't seen The Crow yet. We might as well watch Boy Killed the World, World also. I actually seen uh, The Boy Kills the World when I was watching uh, the Spoiler Kings channel. Have you seen the trailer for I Saw the TV Glow? Yeah, with um, the girl from Atypical and uh, Justice Smith. I saw the trailer for that. I still find it weird that he has two big action movies coming out a, a months apart. Yeah, it is weird. They should have spread it out a little bit more. I don't like this trailer. I'm keeping an open mind, but I don't think this will be good. I'll rent it this because I'll watch it eventually. I Have you seen the trailer for Late Night with the Devil with the dude from The Dark Knight, Ant-Man? I heard he's really under, I heard he's a really underrated actor. He is a really underrated actor. Um, I forgot how to say his name. Damascus is, I think, his, la his first name or something like that, or his last name. He's a really underrated actor. I've seen the trailer for it. It's coming out this weekend. Um, I'm hearing really good things about it, so I definitely want to check it out. Boy Kills, the world looks better than this. Yeah, I would say it looks more unique than this movie does.
that's a great point, Brandon Davis. It does feel like they show the entire movie in the trailer. I feel like I know everything that's going to happen. The ebbs and flows and everything. I feel like it's going to be no surprise. I'm going to see Late Night with the Devil this weekend. Nice. I, I'm going to see Ghostbusters and Immaculate. Hopefully, uh, I might watch Late Night with the Devil when it hits Shudder. I think it's going to hit Shudder later on. So, I just pre-ordered the original Crow movie with Bruce Lee's son, and he actually died when that movie... Yeah, yeah, we know. The Crow is the source of his power, so they will figure out that and kill them both. Okay, that's true. I guess they will have to f figure that out. So, I'll rent the Crow and buy Boy Kills the World. Got you. Uh, let's see, selling it. Collector movie said he's selling it. He is not down for these trailers. He just looks acolyte. That is it. I was alive when Brandon Lee died. Oh, when did the crow come out? Was I alive? Yes, I was alive. <laughs> when Brandon Lee died, I was a, I was a young pup, but I was alive. Let's see. Let's get into. I need to start wearing my glasses. I'm getting blind, guys. <laughs> this whole like trying to not wear glasses so the reflection's not there. Man, my man said I was born in '79. Okay, you're like my brother's my sister age. I wasn't young and I was too young to watch the the crow in theaters, but I saw it on TV a bunch. That was my jam. Okay, so let's get into our last two topics. First off, pack of the box office. We're going to talk about the box office due for this weekend. Uh, talk about what's doing well, all the narratives that come with it, and um, see how these movies that we love to go see in theaters is doing. So let's start with boom, 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 boom. Kung Fu Panda 4. Um, obviously it was a huge surprise, uh, last week when it did like 60 million, basically, um, in theaters, people didn't really think it was going to do that well. And it did, and it dropped 48%, which is not bad. Usually these films drop in the sixes, the sevens, but it dropped only 40% and made 70 million. It's 107 million, um, gross in the United States. And I think it's like almost... 200 million worldwide. Doom Part 2 in its third weekend only dropped 38%, which is an amazing hold. Um, and it made 28 million. And obviously some of the theaters, because it's going to be losing some of its uh, premium theaters to uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife coming this weekend. But it's made 204 million domestically alone. It's made 500 million worldwide, already beating out the gross for uh dune part one so we're definitely gonna get Dune messiah this movie's a hit it's gonna continue to do well because it's gonna keep the imax theaters um away from ghostbusters and it's gonna share it with um uh what's that movie name godzilla x kong new empire so those those two movies are gonna share a screen so it's still have premium screens people will still be able to go see an imax but for kung fu Fan panda 4 specifically this is great for it because they already announced they're gonna do kung fu panda 5 hopefully they bring back the furious uh furious 5 back into that film because a lot of people had issues with the lack of them there it, it, it lost something and uh, yeah, this franchise is back and it's just showing that people want to see these animated sequels. Just give some time to breathe in between and people will show up and people show up for Kung Fu Panda and it's a hit despite the uh, divisive reviews for it. Some people hate it. Some people say, meh. Some people think it's great. Doom Part 2 obviously is a runaway hit. Arthur the King uh, went under what people thought. People thought it was going to make it like a 10 to 11 million because Mark Wahlberg it made seven. Still not too bad for this uh, very uh, niche film. It's not very expensive at all. Um, and I think Mark Wahlberg is crafting a spot for him where he's doing these low budget family films that people will go check him out and see. The Family Plan did really good for Apple. It was the highest, it was the most viewed film uh, that that had. So they already announced the number two is coming. So Mark Warburg has a little bit of a new niche coming his way in terms of doing really family-friendly films. Imaginary, obviously, uh, is going to end up doing well overall. Obviously, this movie was not great, <laughs> but the budget was $20 million. It's already at 19 It dropped only 44%, um, and I think that is going to have like a, d a decent amount of legs 
until Immaculate comes out, and then it's probably going to drop real hard coming out this week. But I still think it could do pretty well. Cabrini, unfortunately, is not a hit like a lot of Angel Studios uh, movies have been from like last year. Dropped 60%, only $13 million. I guess I haven't really seen people talk about it at all. Not like how um, Sound of Freedom was talked about. I think it lacked the conspiracy theory and interest. I don't think the faith-based part is what pushed it. Uh, Love Lies Bleeding opened wide and uh, got jumped from 21 to 6. And while I was went wide, it's made 2 million. It's not a really high budget film. I'm, I'm happy that the film is doing okay. Um, it's not going to be a runaway hit. It's not going to be something like a, but it's a calling card for Rose Glass, the director, Kristen Stewart, and especially Katie O'Brien, who was fantastic in the film. I really love the film. One of my favorite films of the year. Uh, Bob Marley, One Love may not hit a uh, hundred million, but it got really close and is really good for this film for it to get to 93 million. It's now available on digital. It's going to be on Paramount Plus, I think April 2nd, they said. So I haven't gotten to check it out in theaters, but I definitely will check it out on streaming. And probably the mo- one of the most controversial films of the year, The American Society of Magical Negroes, which I have a review for um, in- on my channel, uh, did $1 million. Um, People thought it was going to do more than that. For some reason, I can't find the um, bu- the budget for this film. I don't know why. I wonder if this has it. Let me see. What is the budget for this film? Worldwide, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, so for whatever reason, I can't find the budget for this film. Every time I look it up, I never find what the true budget is. If you can find it, let me know in the live chat or in the comments down below. Um, but yeah, this movie's gonna flop because it's only starting at one million and start. It has very, very bad and divisive reviews. I don't think the word of mouth is gonna help it at all. I see this dropping 60 to 70 percent next weekend, especially with uh Immaculate and um uh what's that uh movie? What's the name said? The the devil movie. The Late Night with the Devil coming out, another smaller movie that people have some hype about. They have too much competition going on. It's probably going to drop out of the top 10. Ordinary Angels is starting to bow out. It did okay. Migration continues to be hit. And then the rest of the top 10 is films that we're familiar with, like Palomista, Port Things, Oppenheimer, Madam Web, Migration, uh, Wonka, Demon Slayer. Obviously, Snack Shack came out. This was a super low-budget film, so it made 300000 I think it was a limited release because it's only 437 theaters, so this might be a slow burn of a film, but it's already announced its digital release. And it looks like a film that could be cool. I saw the trailer, and it looks really interesting. So... Uh, Kung Fu Panda 4, I think that the director for this is going to move on to direct the fifth one. We're going to get some more. Hopefully, they can improve on the things that people have problems with. Doom Part 2, obviously, is, is a, it's a breakaway hit. People are, are collectively saying it's great. Arthur the King um, performing under what people thought it was going to, but it's doing okay for this budget. Um, so let's move on to the next topic. Let me know what you guys feel about your favorite films and how they're doing in theaters but the next one the next one is what's coming out next on physical media digital and in theaters and i'm excited to get into this and start talking about some like theatricals oh no some physical media stuff i'm adding that into my repertoire um let me see so coming out today march 19th uh, the Ring Collection on 4K is going to be out. Um, K19, The Widowmaker on 4K. The Manchurian Candidate on 4K. Child's Play on 4K. Carrie on 4K. Um, Changing Lanes, which is a movie I really like that's underrated on 4K. Dark Matter, The Witness. So we're getting two Harrison Ford films. And um, Dark Water, but it looks like it's going to be like a special edition. Also, it's going to be coming out on 4K. So if you guys... Want to check out any of those films this week? You can check them out wherever you buy physical media, whether it's Amazon, Walmart, or your favorite mom and pop shop. Those are some of the films that you could be picking up. I might pick up uh, Changing Lanes because I really like that movie. It'll be cool to own that on 4K because I think I have it on DVD. So it'll be time to like majorly upgrade that. I own Maturian Candidate, but I actually haven't watched that movie yet. So I'm not going to pick up a 4K. I'll probably watch the version I have. And then if it's great, I'll buy it. Um, the Witness and K19, I never seen those either. So these are suggestions I can check out and maybe get to 4K later. The Ring scares the shit out of me, so that's definitely not something I'm gonna get. <laughs> um, but yeah, moving on to um the stuff that's coming out on digital. This is coming from wonderstream.com. I found these guys on um Twitter slash X, and they are really accurate and great. 
Bob Marley One Love. I was just talking about how it's starting to bow out. Is now available to uh, buy on digital and rent on digital, but it also will be on streaming April 2nd, like I said, on Paramount Plus. So if you have Paramount Plus, you can wait April 2nd to stream it on there. If you don't and you want to check it out but don't want to own it, you can rent it or five like six dollars more, five dollars more, you can buy it. And and Slim uh, from 2023 is available to uh, buy and rent rent for pretty cheap at seven dollars a pop. It's available now on the Criterion channel if you're subscribed to that. French Girl, uh, which is a, a brand new movie straight to digital, is available to buy at fifteen dollars, which is not that bad. But it's going to be on Paramount Plus in July. So this is not something that you're want to run to. You can wait to July, but if you want to see a new rom com, you can buy that right now for fifteen bucks, which is not bad. Land of the Bad, which did okay at theaters, starring the Hensworth brothers and a few other people, like people in there, is available to buy um, right now. You can wait till July. It's a lot of Paramount Plus films coming out this week. Um, Paramount Plus, but I heard this film was not that bad. Uh, Inside the Yellow Cocoon Shell, a movie that got some hype from last year, is available to buy for twelve ninety nine. That's really really cheap. And also to rent for four ninety nine, and it's June is going to be on Canopy and Kino Film Collection. Those are like uh, that movie Canopy Kino are like real indie movies that they have on there. So definitely re rented it five dollars is pretty pretty cheap. Um, and then some stuff that is going to be getting discounts in terms of renting the Beekeeper, which I'm finally going to get to see it. I'll, I'll rent. I might rent it for six dollars just to support the film. Or I might wait. I don't have MGM Plus, so yeah, I definitely will rent it. Um, or you can rent it for six dollars, and you can buy it for twenty dollars now instead of twenty five. The Iron Claw now is twenty dollars, six dollars to rent, and it will be on HBO Max in April. Not exact date, but it'll be next month. Mean Girls you can now uh, buy or rent for pretty cheap, and it's but it's already on Paramount Plus and MGM Plus. Freud's Last Session, which came out late last year, you can buy for cheap and rent for cheap. Uh, we'll be on Netflix in August, so that's a little while away. But those are the stuff that's coming out this week um, that you can stream or you can pay and buy. Um, let's move on to what's coming out in theaters. Obviously, we know the big one is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. We have a lot of cool movies coming out this week. But this will be a sequel to Ghostbusters Afterlife. I actually watched that movie for the first time today. I thought it was good. It wasn't, it wasn't great. It wasn't bad at all. I had a good time with it, but nothing amazing. Um, so I, I had tickets for the Go See Ghostbusters on Friday. I'm still excited to go check it out. Paul Rudder was my favorite part of that first film. So hopefully he gets a bigger uh, role in this and is awesome. Uh, Immaculate, the new Sydney Sweeney film coming out um, this week. Um, this is a film that she's been working on a lot. I think it was like 10 years ago that she was trying to get the film off the ground. It's finally getting out. It's a horror movie, which I think that Sydney Sweeney is perfect for. Um, the reviews have been mixed. I hear that it's cookie cutter in the first half, but then goes bonkers in the second half, which is my kind of horror film. I like that, that it's going to go crazy in the second half. And I heard the ending is really, really good. And I like Sydney Sweeney as an actor. Um, so I'm excited to check this out. And this is the director from The Voyeurs, which is a film I like. And it was like a real, like a erotic horror thriller kind of film that uh, they did together. So it's interesting to see them pair back up. So I'm excited to support her. I think Sydney Sweeney is uh, on the rise and more and more. Uh, Sleeping Dogs, which is going to be starring Russell Crowe, Mark Fasno, Adam Cooper, Karen Gillian, um, is going to be about Roy Freeman is under going a cutting edge Alzheimer's treatment. He's forced to grapple with the impact of an investigation from his former life after a death row inmate that Freeman arrested 10 years ago prior starts to proclaim his innocence. Intrigued and fighting to regain his memory, Freeman enlists his former partner to help him revive the case and discover the truth. Together, they set off to unravel a tangle web of secrets forcing Freeman to make some horrific discoveries. Sounds interesting. Uh, Crow, it sounds like maybe Crow and Karen Gillian are together as the partner, hopefully, because I like Karen Gillian. But that's something that you could definitely check out if you don't want to see these other bigger movies. Luca is going to re-release. This is the continuation of Disney re-releasing these films in theaters because they didn't get released because it came out during the pandemic. Luca is a film I've never seen, but I'm not going to have a chance to check it out in theaters. But if you were a fan of it the first time or were interested in seeing it, go check it out in theaters. Um... Late Night with the Devil, as one of the channel members was talking about, in 1970s late night talk show unleashes evil into the, the nation's uh, living room. David Dash, I always mess up his name, 
Dashamelin, I think his name is. He's been in tons of things. Prisoners is one of the, his better performances. That's a Denis Villeneuve film. I love that film. Obviously, he was in the Suicide Squad as Polka Dot Man. He's been in tons of stuff. Um, yeah, but he's the main star here, and it's getting a lot of great buzz. But yeah, I think those are the ones that I can highlight for this um, weekend that's coming out. Um, in terms of like box off predict predictions, this is coming from Deadline. They're saying that uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire can make the Ghostbusters franchise a billion dollar franchise, and Sydney Sweeney Nun movie is going wide because it's been slowly pulling out. So, where is it? it said Sony's hundred million dollar sequel to Ghostbusters Afterlife, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, is looking to open at 45 million, give or take. So, it may go a little lower, it might get a little higher. Um, hopefully, it goes like 50 million. The previous installment released during the pandemic. And it was directed by Jason Reitman and produced by the late Ghostbusters filmmaker Ivan Reitman. Oh, yeah, that's his son that directed that one. Opening to $44 million. So they're predicting it for it to be around the same opening despite this not being a pandemic anymore. That's Hopefully the interest is a little higher than that. Um, and legged out at $129 million. Currently, through four movies, the Ghostbusters franchise has made $945 million. The fifth title will easily put the brand at $1 billion mark for this weekend, but shortly after. Um, yeah, so that's big. That's really big for the Ghostbusters franchise. Hopefully the film does get enough hype. I haven't really seen reviews for it yet. Um, and does really well. I'm hoping for it surprise people and get 60 million at the box office and do really well. Um, uh, overseas Frozen Empire is going to open at 25 markets, which is 55% of the markets and it's going to miss out on some things. So as the markets roll out, it'll have a bigger budget, um, that it, it makes. And then Reitman rebooted the franchise, a kind of soft reboot. He's not going to be directing this one. The person that he wrote with last time, Gil Keenan, will be directing this one while he uh, helps with writing, which I think is interesting that he's not going to direct it. I think that there's some things direction-wise that can improve, so let's see how Gil does. And then when it comes to Immaculate, um, the movie premiered at South by Southwest. is at a 70% Rotten Tomatoes, which is not bad for a horror film. Those are usually divisive. And... Um, is saying that it's going to go below a double digital start. So it's not a lot of hype for this film. Not like anyone but you. Maybe people want to see Cindy Sweeney half naked, and that's why. <laughs> but yeah, I am mildly excited for Frozen Empire. I am excited for Immaculate. I want to definitely find a way to check out um, One Night with the Devil. Um, and some of these other films that are coming out this Friday, I will check out on streaming. But let me know in the comments down below what you're going to be checking out on streaming, uh, physical, or in theaters. Let me say what you guys in the live chat have to say. This is now we're going to be going to the Q&A section of this. So you guys can ask me what you guys want about anything, any topic Do you, you want. Um, does it have to be uh, movie-related? It could be television show-related. It could be life-related. It could be anything, as long as it's not Let me see what you guys got to say. I lived through Tupac East Coast West Coast beef. <laughs> we all did. We all did. Uh, we are the same age. I was born in '78. Oh wow, Brando. So what? Sorry. Okay, I don't know what he's talking about. You look nice with glasses. You look like a smart guy. <laughs> Thank you. I guess <laughs> I look dumb without glasses. Uh, I'm I'm from New York. I always give people from Cali the side eye, <laughs> especially since Tupac was born in New York. Um, Caleb Greeny, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, it's a faith-based movie. It hasn't had a lot of, uh, uh, what's the word? A uh, promotion. My mom just saw a movie with Anthony Hawkins that came out last week when I went to go see Love's Lies Bleeding today. She really enjoyed it. it. had to go about World War II and the Holocaust. I think that is Freud's last session, um, which is going to be coming to digital soon. Which Manchurian Candidate, the remake or the original? I believe it's the remake. Okay, the oh, it's the original. Okay, wait, what? <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's the the remake. Yeah, I've seen the witness. Okay, is it a good movie, Brandon? I'm definitely picking up the Ring trilogy in April. Same with the movie with Horizon, oh, Horizon, Harrison Ford, and Liam Neeson, K nineteen. Land of the Bad. I've never heard of it. Hey, day show. Hopefully your dinner is really good. I'm about to get some bun and cheese myself to eat. Um, uh, Jamaican delight. 
Del delicacy, that's the word. Love the beekeeper. Yeah, you know, I've heard mixed things. I know Kenny Sparks said it was garbage. <laughs> so I was like, eh, I want to kill myself to go watch it out. But, you know, some things that he likes and some things I like is different. So we'll see. Uh, I pre-ordered Beekeeper on 4K, so I'm getting it April. Nice. Going to rewatch Afterlife tonight. Nice. I would definitely be interested in that Russell Crowe movie. I'm going to wait until it comes out physically. Okay. I'm excited for Frozen Vampire. I loved Afterlife. Yeah, I thought Afterlife was cool. I didn't love it, but I thought it was cool. Here's a question. Do you feel like you are asking this you are asking this earth alone like you're here, but you're really not here? Whoa. <laughs> What a deep question for Dejo. He, my, my man ate and his third eye opened up and he's like, let me go confuse Zach. Um, here's a question. Do you feel like you are at you? You asking this earth alone? I'm not too sure what you mean by asking this earth alone. Like you're here, but you're not really here. Um, no, I feel like I'm here. I feel like I'm here. And I, I don't, I don't. I'm not into the like the conspiracy of the puppetry or this is a simulation or like that's not my philosophy. I feel like we're here. Do I feel like I know what's going on in the world? No, something just fell. <laughs> if y'all heard, but I, I I don't I don't think um I do think I'm here. I do got physically here. I think I'm in control of myself and things like that. Zach, have you ever watched the show Lost? No, I have not watched the show Lost. Oh, you meant walking. Okay, got you. No, I didn't mean that you were always were smart, Zach. I know. I'm just joking with you, collector movie man. I had to grab Wendy's to try their new frosty flavor. Nice. Tell me how it is. I'm gonna take this chance to shout out my channel members, as I always do. Um, yeah. So channel members on the producer tier. Have you uh have you seen with T? Spoiler Kings, Tez made this, Travis Mitchell, Screens and Reviews, Basic Moves, Noah Kaiser, Mama Art Doll, 80s Kids from the 90s. Thank you for supporting on that level. Always appreciate you guys. And if you want to become a channel member, hit the join button down below right next to the subscribe button so you can get to see my videos early. You can join my Discord. So during watch alongs, you have access to watch the movie and also um, see... Uh, what's the word I look at? Uh, see what I'm saying. We could talk during during the watch alongs exclusively, and you get priority when it comes to um, uh, like in the chat and stuff like that, and also when you comment on my videos. How have you not watched Lost? Lost was great. That's what I hear. I just that wasn't my show. When did Lost come out? I also heard bad things about Lost all the time. <laughs> Especially, I heard the ending wasn't great. So, 2004, I was 14. I wasn't watching shows like Lost when I was 14. <laughs> I was still watching, like, I was watching Toonami when I was 14. I was watching anime and animated shows and stuff like that. I wasn't watching a lot of live action stuff. And when maybe, like, what was coming out in 2004? Shows that came out 2004. Let's see. So we have Lost, we have Earth Sea, never heard of it. I was watching Veronica Mars in 2004. I was watching The Batman in 2004. Um, let's see. Definitely was watching Veronica's Mars. That was my jam back in the day. Yeah, well, based on this, yeah, I was watching Param, uh, not F and Lied, Danny Phantom, like a lot of Justice League, a lot of these like animated stuff. That was my jam. I wasn't watching stuff like Lost when I was 14. <laughs> Zach, what are your five favorite fast food restaurants? Ooh, uh, fast food restaurants. My five favorites would be, um, I think I answered this in an attacking Zach, but uh, five favorites. So I like Wendy's, I like White Castle, I like Five Guys, I like, I guess I'll say Golden Crust because they're like the fast food um, Jamaican spot, that's four, and I can't think of a fifth one right now. On to Google, fast food places. Oh, Panda Express. <laughs> I love Panda Express. I know it's not real Chinese food, but I love it. 
I love Lost except the last season. That's what I heard. I hear. I hear people say that it's a really great show to watch up, but the ending is disappointing. Zach, would you ever go on a show naked and afraid? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you guys do not want to see me naked or afraid. I will say the end of Lost is very confusing, but I also really enjoyed it for what it was. Okay. I cried at the end of Lost. I enjoyed the last episode. Okay. Damn. Yeah, a lot of Lost fans in the chat. Yeah, Lost, Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones. A lot of these shows, they just miss me. That's not the stuff I was watching. I was watching like anime and animated shows and Smallville and more comic book oriented stuff. Um, it wasn't until I got older where I, used, I really just started watching dramas. And there's certain things that like pertain to me that like, you know, that I watch over this stuff. Boy Meets World, man. Oh, I have a poll going. Uh, what is the poll? End the poll. It says, favorite trailer of the night. 60% of you guys said Acolyte. 20% said Furiosa. 20% said The Crow. Some people like The Crow. So, guys, I'm going, I think I'm going to end the Zach Attack News Live earlier than I usually do this week. I'm feeling a little tired. You probably could notice. <laughs> <laughs> live stream twice yesterday had a long day today so this was really great i just want to say be on the lookout for my review for uh ghostbusters afterlife immaculate i have an attacking zach episode three coming out soon hopefully i get to film that um tomorrow or maybe tonight i don't know we'll see i don't have to go to work early tomorrow and uh i'm gonna be putting a poll up for the next watch along and then also I should be getting to watch, finally watch Lord of the Rings uh, Return of the King Extended Edition so I can continue the throwback series and get a review for that out next week. So be on the lookout for all that stuff, trailer reactions, all that good stuff on the channel coming soon. I want to pre appreciate everybody that was in the live chat today. Dave Show, have you seen with T, Collective Movie Man, Brandon Davis, thank you for being in the live chat even more now. You're awesome. And I think that was, yeah, that was pretty much... It, oh, Cal came in for a little while. Yeah, it was mostly you guys for the chat. Appreciate you all here being here. Um, I hope everyone have a great night. I will see you next time. Peace.